we're going to do a really quick uh, video about downloading the OVA file, uh, which is an uh, Open Virtual Machine Appliance. I believe that's what OVA stands for. Well, to start with, we're going to go to um, github.com, Kevin Wartman slash Tuffix. This is the main Tuffix page. We're going to scroll down until we find installation and hardware requirements. Click that link. We're going to read all this. This is for the Tuffix 2020 release and specifically that release. So I recommend, I strongly recommend that you do a native install. But because I'm seeing a lot of questions about virtual machines, I'm doing this to help you all out, but I don't recommend it. So you scroll down until you find virtual machine instructions. They're at the bottom for a particular reason because it's the worst option. But if you want to do it, you need to make sure that you specifically have VirtualBox 6.1.12. Specifically, 6.1.12. Here's a link to download it. Make sure you get that version and only that version. If you're installing the installation process is more or less double click, install, you're done. On Mac systems, uh, Mac OS has a couple bumps in the road. Uh, if you really want to do this, there are some articles online. The one that we recommend is um, this one, uh, which shows that there's a little box that you have, there's like a couple checkboxes you have to click. Read every single window that pops up and make sure that you follow the instructions. You do need to enable VirtualBox to have access to your computer, which means that you have to override some basic defaults. So read those screens carefully, follow the instructions carefully. Finally, we need to download the OVA file. It's this link right here. So we click it, takes us to Google Drive. We're gonna find out it's too big. So now we're gonna download it. It's three gigabytes. We're gonna download it anyway. Okay, we downloaded the file. And I'm gonna go back to the instructions. So I have to go back to that earlier tab, go back one step. We just completed this part here. The recommended step is that we verify that we actually download the whole file. This step takes a few minutes, but it's well worth doing. It requires going to the terminal and navigating our file system. But before I do that, I just want to show you in my downloads folder, I have downloaded the file. It is Tuffix space 2020 space edition dot OVA. It is three and a quarter gigabytes on my computer. And now I'm going to follow these instructions here uh, that I've highlighted in my terminal. So I've opened up a terminal. I'm in my home directory. I'm going to navigate to my downloads directory. And I'm going to use the command that they provide. Now, it, before I move on, I can type ls and it shows a lot of stuff there. But I can type ls and verify that that file is certainly there. Ah! Oops, that didn't work out. Didn't work out because of the spaces. I really don't understand why we're putting spaces there, but you can put backslashes to escape out the spaces. Ah! <laughs> it still doesn't work. Um, anyway, I know it's there. I see it, I know it's there. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move uh, that file to another file name without the spaces because I really don't like spaces. You don't need to do this. Oh! Oh! Just got to change it over here. Spaces are the bane of my existence. Now you say, like, how come that's happening? I've got some stuff set up on my computer that since I never use spaces, it's never an issue. It's right there, as I expected. So now we want to do this uh, process. And I don't know why on God's green earth we put spaces there, but there are. But I've taken them out, so now my life is good. So we've got this big long string. Now I need to see if it's the same. Easy way to do it. 
go into Python. The original one is that one. Mine is this one. And I'll check to see if original and mine are the same. They're the same. Exit out of Python with a control D. Now I know I've got the right file. I pop over to VirtualBox. I already have VirtualBox running. Uh, I'm ready to go. This is the correct version, version 6.1.12. And I'm going to go to Import Appliance. It's going to be the local file system. I select the file. Yeah, it needs access to it, so OK. Sure, it needs access to my document folder, whatever. Downloads. Looking for Tuffix. There it is. Tuffix 2020 edition OVA. Hit open. Hit continue. Let me move this up a little. Continue. You don't need to change anything on the screen. Uh, be aware at the bottom that it's going to save the work or the virtual machine and virtual box VMs in your home directory. Um, and you can fiddle around with the MAC address pro um, policy if you want. It's You can leave it as is. Uh, everything else looks okay. You click import. Now it's going to make a virtual machine with two gigabytes of RAM. So let's imagine that you have like your typical laptop or desktop setup with four to eight gigabytes of RAM. If you're running Windows or Mac OS, already a good portion of that operating system, or the good portion of that RAM is taken up by the operating system. And then let's say you're running Chrome or Firefox or Safari or Edge or whatever web browser you want, that takes up a lot of RAM too. So you don't really have that much RAM left. That's why I don't really think these virtual machines are a good option because they're super slow. On the iMac that I'm using here, I've got a lot of RAM. I purposely bought this computer with a lot of RAM so I can do things like this on it and know that it'll perform okay. But for students in 120 or 121, you might not have a computer with a lot of RAM. And I'm, when I say a lot, I'm talking about 64 gigabytes or more. So if that's the case, a native install is a lot better than um, these VMs. But you know, if money's an issue, I get it. The VM is the best option. However, if you got like 100 or 200 bucks because you didn't have to buy a textbook for a class, then maybe you want to consider getting a Raspberry Pi with 4 to 8 gigabytes of RAM and dedicate that to Tuffix, to Linux, or getting an old laptop. Maybe even somebody in your family has an old laptop that you can use. So we've got it um, installed, uh, and I just double click it to boot it up. And it's booting. You can just click X on these guys right there. And you're probably saying like, why is the window so small? Well. It's a virtual machine. We have to set all that up. So that's something you can explore later by looking at um, view, just window size. Um, you know, there's all sorts of stuff that you can set so you can make it larger. You, it, this sometimes works. Oh, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, yep, hooray, tiny window. Let's see if I can change the view. No, I think I need to shut it down and then change the view. Anyway, I'm not a fan, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I can't remember. The password is student, I think. Oh, it got a little bit bigger. Hooray! Open up a terminal by clicking this little guy, show applications, terminal, hooray, got my terminal open, tiny little window with tiny text, good thing I got my magnifying glasses on so I can see everything, I can type Adam, opens up Adam, virtual machines, they're there, but unless you got gobs and gobs and gobs of RAM, they're pretty slow. So. I recommend native install. Make sure you shut down. Don't 
put your computer to sleep and then wake it up again with the virtual machine, it, things can go wonky. So I suggest if you're done finishing it, uh, shut down or power off the virtual machine. It's the safest thing you can do. So don't suspend, power off. And you can see that it's powered off right there. When it's turned off, you can do all sorts of different settings, such as um, sharing the clipboard, doing drag and drop. Right now it's disabled. Um, you can also share folders so that you can have a folder on your Windows or Mac computer shared between the virtual machine and whatnot. But again, this is like, why not just use a native machine? So I'll end it there. That should cover most uh, cases.